Hi everyone, Rescue the Perishing here, and welcome to our newest series, Pilgrim's Progress. I want you to take a little while and think, and let us take a, a deep look into our hearts, and think about our lives for a minute. And when we do that, we will recognize how simple we are, and how good God is. Let us reflect on the goodness of God for a while and think about our lives. How, ma how many times he has saved us? How many times he has healed us? How many times he has provided for us? God is good. For this first part of our newest series, we are looking at choose whom you will serve. Now, the book we are taking in consideration is The Pilgrim's Progress. But before we get into that, let us take a while to read our scripture verse today. Our scripture reading is taken from Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. And the word of the Lord says, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorite, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let us pray. Dear merciful Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share your word, and I thank you for everyone who will be listening. I pray, O oh Lord, that we will look deep within our hearts and recognize that there's nothing good of ourselves, but all goodness and honor and glory goes to you, Jesus. That we will make a conscious decision and choose whom we will serve. Amen. As I have said before, our topic is choose whom you will serve. We are capitalizing today on that little phrase from the passage we have just read. Choose whom ye will serve. For this series, we are looking at the book, The Pilgrim's Progress. Now, The Pilgrim's Progress was written by one by the name of John Bunyan. When he was young, when he was small, a little boy, he was rude, he was a very troubled child and disobedient to his parents. But when in his teen years, he realizes that he needed to change. So he decided to join the army because he realized that his lifestyle was driving him to hell. So he joined the army in the first stage of the English Civil War. He spent three years in the army and then he returned to Elstow, which is in England, and took up a trade of a tinker. Now a tinker is one who goes from place to place to mend pots and pans. Then he was interested in religion. And being in, interested in religion, he was then married, had children, and he began to preach. Now at that time he lived, preaching outside of the church was illegal. And especially where more than five persons was present, and that was the case. He preached outside of the church, and he was arrested. Now, while in jail, he spent three months in jail, and when that three months almost have come to expire, the judges asked him if, upon his release, if he will not preach again. But he could not say that he will not preach preach again because he knew that he was commissioned by God rather than men and he, he could not have said I could not preach again and that three months turned into 12 years so he spent 12 years in prison and while in prison God gave him a dream hence the God inspired book the pilgrims progress I truly believe that this book, when read with a correct interpretation, could lead many to the foot of the cross and to Christ. Now, we are going to read a little from this book at this time. 
Now, what we must know that this book is written in a form of an allegory. So it's a story. So we have to remove some of the character and place ourselves in that character's shoes in order to understand the whole method and how the book, the book rather, was written. Now we are starting. It said, now I saw upon a time when he was walking in the field that he was as he was wont reading in his book the and greatly distressed in his mind so there was a person reading in a book and distressed in his mind and as he read he burst out as he had done before crying what shall I do to be saved? I also saw that he looked this way and that way as it was he wanted to run. Yet he stood still because as I perceived he could not tell which way to go. I looked then and saw a man named Evangelist. So we are looking at evangelists coming to him and ask him, Wherefore dost thou cry? He answered, Sir, I perceive by the book in my hand that I am condemned to die. And after that, to come to judgment. And I find that I am not willing to do the first, nor able to do the second then said evangelist why not willing to die since this life is attended with so many evils because i fear that my burden that is on my back will sink me lower than the grave and i shall fall into hell and so if I be not fit to go to prison, I am not fit to the judgment, to go to judgment, and from thence to execution. And the thoughts of these things make me cry. Then said Evangelist, If this be thy condition, why standest thou still? He answered, because I, I know not whether to go. Then he gave him a parchment roll. He gave him a parchment roll. And there was written within it, flee from the wrath to come. The man therefore read it, or read it, and looking upon evangelists very carefully said, whether must I flee? Then said Evangelist, pointing with his finger over a wide field. Do you see yonder wicked gate? The man said, no. Then said the other, do you see yonder shining light? He said, I think I do. Then said Evangelist, keep that light in your eye and go directly there too. So shall thou see the gate at which thou knockest, it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. Now you have to keep in your mind that this is all in the form of a story, an allegory. Now let us dissect each part today. Firstly, there was a man in a field reading a book. Now this book here represents the Bible. He was found reading the Bible. And because he read the things that were in the Bible, he recognized that the place he lived was doomed to be destroyed. And he knew that if he don't do something, he and also his family will be destroyed. But if you read in the book, you will recognize that while reading the Bible, he went to his family. 
and told his family what was recorded in this book. But because his wife and his children were so tangled up in the things of this world, they did not want to hear him. They did not want to hear him because they loved the things of this world. So because he said, okay, in this book saying that the city that I live in will soon be destroyed by fire. And that city, brethren, represents earth. Soon and very soon, this planet that we are living in will be destroyed. And if we don't pick up this book and read it and apply the things that is written in this book, we too will also be destroyed with it. So he explained it to his family, but they did not want to hear. And hence he continued to read and he developed a burden upon his back. Now that burden there represents sin. He recognized the more he read in his book, he recognized how sinful he was. And so too with you and I. When we start to study God's word, and not surfacely, but deeply study God's word, we will recognize that we are sinners. That all our righteousness is as filthy rags. And there is nothing good that we can do in of ourselves. So he developed a burden. He recognized that he was a liar. He recognized that he was a thief. He recognized that he used to commit adultery. He recognized that his way was dragging him to hell and he wanted a change. So he went on the field and as he read it, he recognized that he was doomed to die. Now let us look at this burden for a little while. Now I will take you to Psalms chapter 38. Psalms chapter 38, we are looking at verse 4. And it says, For my iniquity have gone over my head as a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. So our iniquity, our sin, is as a heavy burden. When we practice things that we know sin is a transgression of the law of God. When we practice sin, we are developing a burden upon ourselves. When we lie or we kill or we steal, we are developing a burden burden and that burden need to get rid of brethren. So we hear, saw here in Psalms 38 verse 4 that that burden upon that man's back was sin. Now we also saw that he was reading a book. Let us look at Matthew chapter 24 for a little while. Matthew chapter 24 and the Verse we are looking at is 35. Matthew chapter 24 verses 35 and it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Jesus is saying that though the heavens fall and though this earth be destroyed, his word will never pass away. So we are going back to the story. He cried out because he did not know what to do. He looked that way and he looked that way and he recognized he did not know what to do, where to go, who to turn to. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that you are, you are going through something and you don't know who to turn to? You don't know where to go. This is how this man felt. And many of us could understand that feeling. Our families is just not working out. Our job is not working out. Our finances is just not working out. Our children is giving trouble and everything seems to be going down on a downward spiral. This man felt the same way. And it says he bowed out. What must I do to be saved? Now, let us look, before we get to what must I do to be saved, let us look at Psalms 
119, Psalms 119, and verse 105. When we feel that we are looking this way and that way, and we don't know the, the way to go, we can lean upon this verse that said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When you feel that you don't know what to do or where to go, turn to God's word. Because that word, you will see that light that will lead your path. So this, this pilgrim cried out, what must I do to be saved? Now let us take our Bibles and turn to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. The word of the Lord said, If thou, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him up, raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What must you do to be saved? Confess your sins confess that jesus christ is lord and beside him there is no other and god will show you his light his path within god's word so it said that man cried out what must i do to be saved what must i do to be saved he did not know what to do where to turn to all he knew that his life and the place that he lived were living in was condemned to die. His family did not want to hear. No one wanted to hear because everyone was comfortable with the state that they were living in. My brethren, let me encourage you. Never feel comfortable in the sinful state that you are living in. Never feel that you are okay. Never think that because we serve a merciful God, God will understand and it is okay to treasure sin within our, my heart because God will understand. God will save me because he's a merciful God. No. If God saved you and I in our sins, that means he also, and take us to heaven, that means he also has to accept back Satan and his wicked angels in heaven. God is a God that doesn't show favoritism. If I am treasuring sin in my heart and Satan is treasuring sin in his heart, Satan alone will not be condemned. But I also, because the sin that I treasure, I also will be condemned to die. So what must you do to be saved? Accept Jesus into your heart before it's eternally too late. It may seem as a drudgery, but it's very simple. Read God's word. Hear what God's word have to tell us and apply it in our hearts. Grow in grace. We know that there are many things that in our lives may prevent us from accepting God. But when we throw all those burdens upon God, we will recognize that God, he said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is willing to take our burdens from us. So we are moving on. Here, another character, the first, the second character, rather, comes into view. And his name is Evangelist. Now, Evangelist came and told him, Friend, why are you crying? He said, because I am reading in this book and I've recognized that I am condemned to die. And this world. So evangelists say, isn't it a good thing to die because this world is full of all misery? He said, yes. 
But dying is not it. That is not all. So after Evangelist said, would it be a good thing to die? Here's his remarks. He said, I fear that this burden that is on my back will sink me lower to the grave and shall fall, I shall fall into hell. But he said, but sir, if I be not fit to go to prison, I am not fit to go to the judgment and from thence to execution. And the thought of these is making me cry. Brethren, let us face reality. When we take an introspective view on our lives, we know the life that we are living in. We know the things that we are doing. And if we are doing things that is not adding up to God's word, or that is not acceptable by God, we know that we are not fit for the kingdom of God. And that is what he is saying here. While reading this book, I have recognized that I am not fit because all my sins is driving me to hell. And when judgment there should come, we cannot fool God who takes a record of our sins. There is not, we cannot lie to God to say, but I thought, no, because God sees the deepest recesses of our heart. He reads our heart and he know that we are, that the life that we are living. And he know that if we lost out heaven, we would have choose to lose out heaven, not by anyone forcing us, because, but by our own choice. So he said these things are making him cry. Think about your life today, friends. Are you doing things in your life that, you're, that you know is not pleasing to God? Don't you know that your sins, the things that you and I do that is not right, makes God cry, makes God sad, crucify him afresh? Think about it. Let us not feel comfortable in our sinful state, but let us really pick up ourselves and start to study God's word. When we do that, we will recognize that we need to change, that we need to surrender to God before it's eternally too late. So hear what the evangelist did. He gave him a parchment roll. And today, I am giving you that parchment roll. But hear what that roll reads. Flee from the wrath to come. That is your parchment roll. Evangelist gave him that. He said, flee from the wrath to come. How could we flee from the wrath to come, brethren? How could we flee from the wrath to come? Remember Noah? How did Noah flee from the wrath to come? He built an ark for the saving of himself and his family. That ark represents Jesus. How could you and I flee from the wrath to come? We must be caught up. We must abide in Christ today. That is the only how we can flee from the wrath to come. I would like to share a very inspired quotation from the book Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, Chapter 24, with you. It says, let each put the question in his own heart. How have we fallen into this state of spiritual feebleness and desertion? Have we not brought upon ourselves the frown of God because our actions do not correspond with our faith? Have we not been seeking the friendship and applause of the world rather than the presence of Christ in a deeper knowledge of his will? Examine your own heart. Judge your own course. Consider what associate you, may, you are choosing. Do you seek the company of the wise or are you willing to choose worldly associates? 
companions who fear not God and obey not the gospel? Are, you re are your re recreations such as the impart moral and spiritual vigor? Are your recreations such as to impart moral and spiritual vigor? Will they lead to purity of thought and action? Impurity is today widespread. Even among the professed followers of Christ, passion is unrestrained. The animal propensities are gaining control by indulgence while the moral power are constantly becoming weaker. Many are eagerly participating in worldly, demoralizing amusement, which God's word forbids. Thus, they, they sever their connection with God and rank themselves with the pleasure lovers of the world. The sins that destroy the antediluvian and the city of the plain exists today, not merely in heathen land, not only among popular professions of Christianity, but with some who profess to be looking for the coming of the Son of Man. If God should present these sins before you as they appear in his sight, you would be filled with shame and terror. Let us study God's word. And just as this pilgrim, let us recognize that we need to flee from the city of destruction and run in to the arms of Christ. But it doesn't stay there. It does not stay there. Evangelist told him, so why are you standing here? Can't you see yonder's wicked gate? He said, no, I can't. A honest person, I can't. Some of us may, may want to do right, but we just don't know. So God has sent me today to let you know, can't you see that shining light? The only how we can see that shining light, friends, is when we open God's word and recognize God is saying, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When we open God's word, we will recognize he is saying, come let us reason together, saying the Lord in Isaiah 1. Though your sins be as scarlet, it shall be as snow. And though it be red as crimson, it shall be as wool. God has telling us if we are willing and obedient, we shall be the good of the land. But if we refuse and rebel, we shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So evangelist said, and you see that light over there? Run to that light and don't look back. Today I am commissioning all of you who have not made the decision to serve God yet. Look at the light and that light points to the celestial city. That light points to Christ. Look at that light. Look at Christ and run towards him today. Do not look back. Do not put your hand to the plow and turn back. But let us let nothing discourage us. Let us ask God to show us his way because God is willing to save all of us today so you see that shining light friends run into the arms of christ let us pray heavenly father i thank you for your love your mercy and your grace i pray that nothing will discourage this person who is about to make a decision to serve you but that person will run lord jesus and we know that you will encourage that person and give that person strength to find your celestial city. Continue to be with all of us in Jesus' name. I end by saying what evangelist told Pilgrim. He said, keep that light in your eye and go directly there too. So that so so shall thou see the gate 
at which thou knockest, it shall be told thee what you shall do. Keep that light in your eyes. Maranatha, friends.